Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to cover apt, which is the advanced package tool. And apt really comes from a couple of tools that came before it, apt-get and apt-cache. And the reason, uh, kind of paraphrasing from the man page, is it provides options better suited for interactive use by default versus other app tools. So we're going to cover apt here, and I'll include a link to the Debian documentation in the description. And so actually what we're really working with is dpackage, dpkg, and that is the low-level tool for working with packages on Debian systems. Behind the scenes, apt is actually interfacing with that and running dpackage. One of the big differences is that apt actually handles dependency tracking resolution automatically while dpackage does not. And so generally what you'll see in the documentation as well is that apt is the recommended method over dpackage for that reason. Before we jump into apt, I want to make a quick mention of some other popular tools for managing software on a Debian system. One of them is aptitude. And so that can be run with commands from the terminal, or you can also run it kind of in an interactive mode where you have some options here for listing things out and installing packages using this method. I'm not overly familiar with this because I've always used apt. And so if this is something you might be interested in, leave me comments and I will learn it and demo it. So that's aptitude. There's also the synaptic package manager, which is a graphical tool. And again, that's another one that I'm not overly familiar with, but it is an option. And so I'll just show that real quick. And so it's possible to manage repositories and packages using that. I'm not gonna dive into that, I just wanna make you aware of it and that it is available and can be installed on your system. So now we'll move into how we update our system. And so the first thing we have to do when we wanna update our system is we have to update that repository data, the metadata that tells us about the packages that are on the repositories that we're pointing at. And so while Debian is a great distribution and one of its strengths is that it aims to be really stable, one of the downsides of that is sometimes the packages are a little bit older, so you might be missing some of the newer features or the latest version of software. And so there is a way to mitigate that. And I'll talk about that briefly later, but really getting into that is a little, little more advanced a topic for another video because this is all about the basics. So to update that package metadata, we have to run as either root or with sudo, we have to run apt update and that will update our package cache and tell us all about the latest on there. And we're all up to date here. So everything's good as far as what we have installed. And then to actually upgrade our system, we would run sudo apt upgrade. And if you run it without a Y, it will prompt you if there are packages to be installed. If you just wanna automatically bypass that and say, yeah, just go ahead and install, you can include dash Y there. And so we also have another command for upgrading and that's sudo apt full dash upgrade. And so the difference here is that upgrade will install new packages as required to satisfy dependencies, but existing packages will not be removed. So if an upgrade requires removal of a package, the upgrade isn't performed. So full upgrade will automatically remove those packages. And I've seen debate on if you, know, you should run full upgrade all the time or if you just run upgrade. Um, and I guess you could probably consider just running upgrade the safer method. That's I generally, run upgrade and then I will run auto remove to get rid of packages that are no longer needed. You can read about the differences in the man pages if you'd like. And so here I'm gonna back out of this. And so basically the same thing though is that I updated the system previously and I used the upgrade option. And so it did not remove packages that are no longer needed. So if I run a sudo apt auto remove, and say yes, it's going to remove the installed packages that are no longer needed. And so we've seen how to update our entire system, all packages on the system. If we just wanted to upgrade a single package on the system, we could just run sudo apt upgrade and then the single package name. 
This is already the latest, so there's nothing to do here, but that's how we would do a single package. And if we wanted to install a single package, we could run sudo apt install xterm, for example. And if I wanted to install multiple packages, I could space separate a list of packages here, like gzip or whatever else. Now we're just going to install xterm and hit yes. We want to install it, and all of its dependencies are installed as well. And so we can do an app show x term. And there we get a look at all the dependencies. We get the recommended packages, which by default are installed automatically. Unless you change the app config, we're not going to look at specifically how to do that in this video. I'm going to cover that in a follow up video. Uh, we have the suggested packages. You'd have to pass an argument to apt in order to, to install suggested packages. We can also search for packages and we can even search for terms. So for example, app search. And if we're just looking to see what terminal emulators are available, we can pass this and we get everything that's available in the repository. So another handy apt command is apt list. And so if we're looking for a specific package, we can try to pass it to app list. Problem there is that if we don't know exactly what we're looking for, we might have trouble finding it. If we don't know the name, we can pass expressions to it. So in this case, it's FCE4. And so we do get that, but if we don't know what we're looking for, we can go with pattern matching. And then we get everything. Pass that wildcard. We can also list our installed packages using app list. And if we're looking for something specific, you can see everything related to Python installed that list. And another handy at command is the depends command, sample quake. There's everything it depends on. And, then, and now we can see what depends on quake. Wait, so we can also download a dev file from a developer site or their Git repository and install that way. And that is also sometimes a good method of getting a newer version of software just check out the project site or their git repository and see what they have available versus what's in the repo so if we list out cherry tree for example we can see that 0.99 is in the repository and i've gone out to their site and i've downloaded the latest version so if we check in my downloads folder you can see that we have a newer version there so we just run at install and we point to that deb file i should say deb package and it will install the package along with all the required dependencies for us And so now we can see that we have that version installed. And of course, we could list out all available versions. Dash A. And that will tell us what is available in the repository and what we have installed. And so now let's check out how we can remove a package. We can do an apt remove, and then we could do cherry tree. The thing is that if we do an auto remove that will get rid of all the dependencies that were installed that we will no longer need and we can also include the purge flag sometimes you may want to do that if you're really planning on getting rid of an app and no longer using it this will clean up the configuration files i will say when it can i've seen stuff not get cleaned up before so sometimes you still have to go in and 
manually remove some of that big. So we'll say yes, and we'll come back when that's complete. And so here we can see that the configuration was purged for the related packages. So we did get some cleanup there using the purge flag. And so now I just want to move into a quick rundown of how we're getting that metadata. So we're going to take a look at a little bit of the app configuration. So let's just clear this up here. And so just some of the config we're going to get into is the sources list. So let's take a look at sources list and so this is what was configured as part of the install there's nothing custom about this this is just default as provided by the debian install and so just to break this down a little bit this is how we're getting that metadata cache on our system about packages available on in the remote repositories a quick run through an entry and we'll see that we have lines that begin with deb. We have lines that begin with deb.src, deb source. And so the difference here is deb is going to give us binary packages, things that are installed and ready to go, where deb source is going to be downloaded with an app option. And then we can compile it ourselves and we then we have our executables. So these are actually optional. That's something you don't have to do. And in fact, I usually don't do that in this instance. You totally can if you want. And if there's interest in that, that's something I could cover in another video. But typically when I'm installing from source, I'm doing it because I want something newer that's than what is in the repository, or they might not offer a Debian package on their project site or in their Git repository. So, that kind of defines what's going on there. Then we have the type. And so you could have HTTP, HTTPS, you could do FTP. There's other protocols you could use. Are you, you know, grabbing this stuff where you have now your URI, which is your path to the repository. And then we have the distribution. In this case, this is Debian 12, so a bookworm. So if you were on Debian 11, you'd see it bullseye there. And then you see this main and this non-free firmware. And what we have there is kind of getting into the Debian philosophy and the Debian social contract. I'm not going to dive into that. It has to do with free sauce software and what's open source and that kind of thing. So I'll include a link to that if you're interested to learn more about that. But that's really kind of what's going on here with these, these labels right here. And so a quick rundown of what we have listed in here. And by the way, if you're not interested in downloading the source packages from the Debian repositories and then compiling them themselves, you could comment these out or not include these. And these would be completely fine. And I will include a link to the Debian documentation for the bookworm repositories, which I believe actually exclude these source repos and they just give you the bare minimum you know, repositories that you need for a bookworm install. And so starting at the top here, this is basically the main piece of stable here where you're gonna get your stable packages. And of course, then we're moving on here is exactly what it sounds like. Here's our security updates. And then the final item in the list here, as it says here, it, it's a little bit shorter um, as far as getting it before a point release is made. So I'll, I'll read by a paraphrased here from the Debian manual, and that is packages from proposed updates may be made available here. This path will be used for updates which users may want to install on their systems before the next point release. So Again, I will include a link to those sources so that you can read more about that if you're interested in learning additional details there. And I'm going to stop here as far as covering the repositories because I'm going to split this up. I'm going to do another video that gets a little more advanced for now. In this video, I'm basically covering what's to get you up and going and kind of the basic what's what with this stuff so that you could, if you choose to, manually install 
packages on your system using apt and manually keep your system up to date. I'll cover you know more in more detail how we can kind of change some defaults and automatically update. So before we move on, there's one more thing I want to mention here. And I would mentioned it earlier about how we can kind of work with having more up-to-date software on a Debian system is they do make what available what's called backports and that's a repository you can add here and when you add that this is basically stuff from test recompiled for stable but the caveat of that being that it is not thoroughly tested so you could run into issues with other components in stable and conflicts so that's something to keep in mind if you are considering that there is a link that explains all those caveats and how to set that up and I will include that so that you can check that out if you're interested in. So from here, I am going to stop with this and leave this as the, the very basics of apt and, and kind of managing your system. It'll get you up and going. I'm going to follow up in the next video and get a little more advanced with some of the other things here, like adding your own extra repos or repos for a specific piece of software and maybe how we can verify those repos. So hopefully you found this video helpful for learning the basics of apt. And I would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel and like the video and comment and let me know what other types of tutorials you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.